Hey guys, Cal Torak here. Today, I am bringing you my first build highlight video for Stormgate. I am showcasing the Celestial build by It's Feibe, using Seraphim. For those that don't know Fey, she is a former Heroes of the Storm Pro and current Age of Empires 4 Pro. I learned this build by watching her stream and have been having a blast with it on the ladder. The core of this opener is Seraphim. They are a tier 2 flying unit made from the Legion Hall. What makes Seraphim unique is her fast mobility and high creep damage. A single Seraphim can solo an entire healing camp with ease. In a group, they are quickly able to secure camps, leading to you controlling the entire map in minutes. What makes them even more deadly is the fact they can solo siege camps very early on, putting devastating pressure on your opponent. Combine this with the recent changes making camps provide more resources, this opener is deadly, fun, and sets you up with a clean transition to the mid game. For this build, we immediately move our prison to mining Ethereum and start creating another prism. I like to have both of these prisms mine Ethereum once, then I will move one of the prisms to the Luminite. This will keep me up with my Ethereum production. Use your warp core to create a creation chamber and build a power bank as well. The moment you have 100 Ethereum, upgrade to Arc Station. Once the Arc Station is complete, we start our Legion Hall. Begin production of another prism, and the moment the Legion Hall is finished, begin production of Seraphim. Create a Morph Core and send your first Seraphim to the nearest camp. And as soon as you can afford it, use the Morph Core to create a collection array at the nearest expansion. You can easily solo all the camps in the game with 4 Seraphim. I tend to make 4 to 6 for harassment and creep farming, and then transition into standard creation chamber play. Of course, no build is perfect. Seraphim do very low damage in non-creep units. You can find yourself quickly overwhelmed if you aren't careful. I recommend scanning their base to see if they are expanding or not. If they aren't expanding, you should start pumping out Argents. Create extra power banks and defend your base with Sovereign's Watch if needed. If they do expand, you are free to clean the map of creeps. If possible, rush to their side of the map and steal their camps, denying them all the extra resources. I'm not going to give a full-on build order because there's still so much refinement that can be done here. However, I hope this video showcases the fun and power of this build. I will be ending this video with me casting a match I played versus Ray Rain's Vanguard, showcasing the power of this build on certain maps. If you like the build, head over to It's Feibe's Twitch and give her a follow. If you enjoyed this guide, like and subscribe. Take care and storm them gates, y'all. Hey guys, so I wanted to bring you just a quick commentary match. This is one of my first games I played with the build. I just happened to run into Ray Rain's Vanguard. Ray Rain, if you don't know him, he is a longtime SE2 pro. He is incredibly good at RTS games. Um, Vanguard is his off ray, so this is not by any means like me trying to flex. Um, I also caught him off guard. He went mass dogs. But um, the main reason I want to show this build is just like the versatility of it. Not even the versatility of it, the power of it on this map. So we're going to go ahead and speed through the early bits. Uh, I've already gone over the build order before. But, um... He does end up going for a dog mass build, and it does not end up working for him. And it's because I am able to utilize these camps in a really powerful push. So, I'm going to go ahead and just speed things up for a little bit until we get to the Seraphim action. I should just go to times 4 until the first Seraphim is out. All right, so here comes my Legion Hall. Now, what I initially would have done is I would have sent it straight to this camp. But because, it, I mean, Ray Rain's smart, he scouted uh, that I was doing some form of cheese. He didn't see that it was a Seraphim cheese, or he would not be massing dogs like this. Um... But he was able to get this camp very quickly. Normally, I would send my first Seraphim down here to steal his uh, healing camp. Because healing camps are just super easy to uh, to kill. Um, but here comes my first Seraphim. And um, we're going to go ahead and start collecting camps. And as you can see, one Seraphim alone is able to very easily kill one of these healing camps. One Seraphim, three shots. One of the slimes. And I barely took any damage there.
Okay, Seraphim Number 2 is out. Um, this is when things get a lot easier. Um, you can solo majority of the camps. Um, obviously, taking this camp is very important. Gives you the vision of in case a push is coming. But also, it lets you know if they're going to see you killing the Skull Squisher, as you'll see here in a moment. Um, and on this map specifically, it is very easy to kill these Skull Squishers, um, as you can see here. Um, I like to do it with at least three. You could probably do it with one if you micro it perfectly. It would just take a long time. But um, as you can see here, you can kind of leash them backwards, and you can get them stuck like this. And um, it is very easy. Like, we're talking, what is this, four minutes into the game, and I'm already killing off a Skull Squisher, which is going to push one of the siege vehicles towards his base, which is just so absurdly strong. Even if I don't pressure with it, like, he has to react to it in a certain way. Um, and of course there's two of them on the map so here I am with my Seraphim and um, of course flying units can capture camps and we have our first uh, V5 rocket launcher um, now I am going to start trying to pick off some doggos here um, which will make my push even stronger and um, I believe I try to take this second one here oh yeah I do and um, during this time he actually kills the first one which is fine, I guess, because it actually lets me get this one closer to him, but, uh, where are his doggos? There they are, yeah, I know they run up and, um, so the rocket launchers can't shoot next to them, so all you gotta do is surround them, they're easy to kill, which, maybe I should have been defending this one with more Argents, I think back home I am expanding and getting more, uh, creation chambers down. Now I am going to cap this one, his dogs are very forward out on the map, which is fine. But now, I mean, I've gained so much resources just from killing these mobs that, like, I'm ahead in supply. I've got so many creation chambers back home. I'm building power banks. I've got my expansion down. And now I'm doing a pretty scary push with this rocket launcher. So um, he immediately just starts bodying this. And I've got my air units to start picking off the dogs. Now, if he had been massing any other unit, I don't beat Ray Ray in this game. The fact It was just the fact that he was massing dogs that allowed me to be able to protect this rocket launcher. And, like, the, the turret can't even defend this, um, and I can use my aero units to now start defending the rocket launcher. And at this point, it's pretty much GG. Um, but as you can see here, like, I didn't min-max this well. Um, I caught, like, there, there's so much more I could have done. Like, I, I could have, like, one base this and done this push with Argents. I could be on three bases behind this if I was mackering better. I could have been harassing the main while I was pushing the front with Argents. Um, as, like, there's so much that can be optimized with this strategy. Now, obviously, if they do one base strategies where they get a bunch of Lancers out, that could really shut this build down. But if you build enough power banks back home, um, you can defend with the defensive lasers. And, um, yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm just going to start uh, controlling the map. Um and mass a lot of units. I believe I'm going to go take my third base right now as well. Um, I've begun researching upgrades back home, so I'm going to have Kree rolling in soon. I'm going to have upgraded Argent soon. Um, back home, I mean, he, he's suffering economically from that. He took a decent amount of damage. He lost some units there. He's really only down to a handful of Exos. And I'm just around the map, like, look at this. I'm just... I still have all of my Seraphim alive. It makes camping so easy. I'm getting, like, so far ahead economically. Like, these camps give so much resources now. So, this strategy is just so dang powerful um, if it's not scouted and reacted to properly. I, I, and I'm not even a Celestial main. I'm an Infernal main. And um, I'm almost Diamond now uh, spamming this strategy. So... I'm back home, he's massing more units. I think I wait for the second one of these to spawn, and I do another big push with it, and that's what wins the game. Uh, like, remember, the first one was taken so early that I, um... That it's just gonna respawn before long. I don't know the exact timer on these camps. I think it's five minutes, six minutes, I'm not sure. Uh, but the sooner you get these camps, which with the Seraphim Rush, you get them really fast, and yep, here we are taking another camp um the uh tower here is going to respawn then i'm going to take another siege camp and then i believe that's when i end with the push so i mean seraphim just clear these camps so fast i'm up ahead on supply right now and i've still got like look how badly i'm macroing i'm so far ahead i got so much uh, uh bank resources um 
I don't have any um, prisms really made. I could have had a second arc ship by now, probably. There's probably a lot more I could have been doing macro-wise. Again, I'm not uh, the best celestial player. I'm, I've mainly been playing Inferno, Infernals. All right, so there we go. Now this one is spawning. Going to use the Seraphim Kitem back to this spot here. And then this is just, I mean, it's so free. And you can do this with a lot of camps on a lot of maps, not with just Seraphim with range mobs. There's a lot of weird pathings things you can do. But um, we're going to go ahead and cap this camp. He's pushing up here, and I'm going to get a big flank on him. I bl oh, yeah, I remember that's what happened. Um, ended up catching those three exos off guard, which is obviously horrible. And then, of course, get a big surround here. Um, I think I ended up losing a bunch of Seraphim here, which is just, like, really bad macro, micro on my man. Like, he's, he's just a much better player, and then I'm only winning just because I've got such a, a huge economic advantage. I'm up 111 to 76 pro supply at this point. Uh, Kree are just going to roll him down. Oh, I, I forgot I put a proxy uh, creation chamber here. I, I forgot I made a morph core, and I flew it over here and put a proxy creation chamber, so it was spawning uh, mobs that were, like, cutting off his resource, or his uh, reinforcements, so... Um, yeah, I mean, it just shows you um, just the amount of map control and, like, the snowball effect that Seraphim openers can give you. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you like the build. Shout out to, again, Faye. I've known Faye forever uh, since the Heroes of the Storm scene. We were both in it from day one, and, uh, you know, it's cool to see that Faye's still around being a badass with these cool builds. So, yep, check out Faye's stream, and uh, I'll see you guys later.